I'll never really know what it's like to be fully Japanese. I'll never know what it's like to feel fully American. Well, if you say so. Though Japanese and American are not emotions, they're nationalities. How you feel is a state of mind. Your mind. Take one, Mark. Hey everyone, I'm Cory Takei. Hi Cory, I'm Scribe. I'm a producer and also on-air talent. On-air talent, huh? Let's see. Ah, your resume. Wow. A correspondent at WrestleMania, a host at an animated Justice League premiere. Well, that's pretty cool. I was born and raised here in Los Angeles, California. Ah, so you're American. Got it. But you might be able to notice, maybe not, that my parents are actually from Asia. Okay, see, that's not how this works. Just by looking at you, I have no idea where your parents are from. They could have both been born in Brooklyn, or Texas, or Germany. I don't know anything about the details of your family's origins just by looking at you. My father is from Japan, and my mom's from Thailand. Your parents came from two different countries, Japan and Thailand. Got it. I'm very, very close to my father, and my father is the Japanese one. Um, your Japanese father looks suspiciously like a previous speaker's Mexican father. I'm not implying anything. A couple years back, I decided I wanted to get to know a lot more about the Japanese culture, not just eating the food, not just speaking the language, and not just doing some traditional Japanese stuff, but I really wanted to immerse myself in the culture, so not just visit family, but actually go out there and live and really feel what it's like to be part of the Japanese culture and get to know my father in that aspect, get to know his background. Okay, sounds fine so far. Though, what about Thai culture, that part of your mother's life and background? Is learning about that part of your heritage not on your list of priorities? It's funny because I think that a lot of um, Japanese people tend to have such strong pride in Japanese blood. So every time I'm sad, my dad would be like, oh, you have Japanese blood. Just be proud and be strong. Yeah, the power of the blood. So I went to Japan. I was super excited because over here, it's kind of always a uh, something that you notice and you you're always cognizant that you're a minority like I'm always cognizant that yeah I'm Asian American I'm not just Asian I'm not just American I'm Asian American right right yes it is true the Asian population of Los Angeles is about 10 percent compared to the 47 percent white population and even the 11 percent black population so you do count as part of a minority but, so what? Also, you're not Asian. You do not come from Asia. You were born and raised in Los Angeles, California. You are an American American, not an Asian American. The moment I got off the plane, I was shocked at how many, this is gonna sound really strange, Asian people there were, and there was no diversity. You got off the plane in Japan, and you were shocked at how many Asian people there were. Really. And that there was no diversity. Well, how do you know that? Were all of the people you saw Japanese? Could some of them have been Thai? Or Vietnamese? Or Korean? But no, they're all Asian. So obviously, they should all be lumped into a single category. Got it. Whether you're black or you're white or you're Mexican. Mexican is not a race. Just saying. Or you're not Japanese, but you stick out like a sore thumb. So that was my experience right when I got off the plane. Fine. Stipulated. You are very focused on the aesthetics of race and have a very strong emotional sensitivity on the subject. But what is the problem? 
they would ask me questions like, do you know how to use chopsticks? Can you eat sushi? And I'm like, this is, this is incredible. I mean, I flat out told them that my father is Japanese. How would I not know how to use chopsticks? Do you mean to tell me that they didn't make assumptions about your knowledge or experiences based simply on the nationality of your father? What could possibly have given them the idea that you might not be well-versed in Japanese custom and culture simply from having a Japanese father? Maybe it's because you only speak conversational Japanese? Could that have been it? And it's funny because I come here to America and they're like, can you teach me how to use chopsticks? You know what I mean? So it's just, it's always like an imbalance. I agree. There is something decidedly imbalanced about this presentation. Even though for before moving there, I felt like such a minority here in America. You felt like. Got it. And it was kind of frustrating to go to the club and talk to people. And one of the first questions was, where are you from? And I know they're not asking me where I'm from in what hometown I am. They're asking me, like, what's your ethnicity? When someone asks you where you are from, they're not asking you where you are from, they're asking you what your ethnicity is. You know this, do you? You're a mind reader? Snarled has the craziest luck in finding so many psychics. That kind of stuff kind of triggered annoyances, but now it's I have a different perspective. I'm like, well, it's a melting pot, and everyone comes from another place here in America, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, and I really appreciate now more than ever how diverse our country is. Wait, so all Japanese people are in lockstep? People from one part of Japan are exactly the same as people from another part of Japan? Unlike America, there's no diversity in Japan? Um, got it? Being raised here in Los Angeles, I had such high expectation going into Japan and being like, I'm Japanese, guys, I'm coming back home, even though I was never born there, you know? Yes, you are an American. You are not Japanese. You were born in Los Angeles. You were not going home. Now, you said you made this trip a couple of years back. You are 34 now, so in your early 30s, having been born and raised in Los Angeles, you saw your trip to Japan as going home. Now, if you had been some excited and naive child, or even a teenager, it might make a little more sense, and might even have been cute, to be that starry-eyed and arrogant. But acting that way as a grown adult? Not so much. Uh, in Japan, I didn't feel like I fit in, but in America, it's, it's, it, you're, you don't always fit in. I feel like the struggle with America is, um, ideally, I wouldn't be constantly self-aware that I'm a minority. The operative term in self-aware is self. Your pain is self-chosen. But at the same time, our country is built on that? Being self-aware that you are a minority is what America was built on. What? That it does trigger awareness, and it's a good thing and a bad thing. Being self-aware that you are a minority triggers awareness. And it's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh-huh. But also, it creates a lot of unnecessary trauma and- While shopping at a convenience store back in February- Um, what? Why are we cutting to an animated news story? And just a note here, I have not edited anything. This is exactly how things proceed in the original video. Our speaker was saying that being self-aware that you're a minority creates unnecessary drama, and then they cut her off to show this. Okay, proceed. Polo noticed a pattern developing, 
No matter where he went in the store, a suspicious attendant always seemed to follow. As she busied herself with random tasks, she cast vilifying stares at Polo. It is relevant. Uh, okay, so being self-aware that you're a minority creates unnecessary drama like someone casting vilifying looks at you in a convenience store. I... Uh, what? Because that's why our country is the way it is. In the years that followed, waves of immigration changed the makeup of the United States. What? What? Now we're in an informational immigration video? I thought this was about the culture shock of trying to understand Japanese culture. Snarled, this is Looney Tunes even for you. From 1965 to 2015, half of all U.S. immigrants came from Latin America and one quarter came from Asia. As a result, in 2015, the U.S. population was 62% white, 18% Latinx. Latinx is not a race. It's not even a real word. You keep trying to make Latinx happen. It's not going to happen. 12% black, 6% Asian, and 2% other races. So there's got to be a balance. Uh, I... I give up. I have no idea what Snarled is trying to tell us here. We've gone from cultural immersion to minority self-awareness to convenience store tales to immigration statistics. Heck, I'm not even sure Snarled knows what's going on at this point. And I think the way for me to feel more at home is for people around us to keep a more open mind. Maybe once a week go out and try something that's so far from your comfort zone, like, I don't know, eating Ethiopian food. Or going on Wikipedia and reading why the Chinese flag has red and yellow on it. I don't know. Like, little things like that. It's kind of to open your mind a little. So, in order for you to feel more at home, other people need to go educate themselves. Other people need to have open minds. Got it. And we have so much opportunity here to do that because we have so many humans and cultures involved. You can talk to somebody and people usually, unless you're like a grumpy old person who's been stuck in traffic all day, they want to talk about themselves. We love it. Oh, well, yes, you love talking about yourself unless it's someone asking you where you're from, because what they're really asking you is to identify your ethnicity. And you can't be asked if you know how to use chopsticks because, like, I mean, your father's totally Japanese already, right? Right? I'll never really know what it's like to be fully Japanese. I'll never know what it's like to feel fully American, like wear American flags for the 4th of July. That's just not my thing, you know? It's just, it's weird for me still. Uh, here's a pro tip. Most Americans don't wear American flags for the 4th of July. And just a reminder, how you feel is entirely up to you. No one else is responsible for your self-esteem. Um, but I really do appreciate being Asian American. Asian American. I don't know. You just got done telling us how this dichotomy you've branded yourself with causes you all sorts of discomfort and insecurity. Maybe you could focus more on who Corey is rather than on what Corey is. Just a thought. As always, thank you for watching.